not is, is for the king of Israel? He said, will you show me who is for the king of Israel? Somebody here, if he's not for me, he's against me. But listen, but listen to what they said. The man of God wasn't there. And he said, one of, one of his servants said, None, my Lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel all the words that thou speakest in the bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is the desert. Therefore he sent tethers, horses, and chariots, and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both the horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, I was Master, what shall we do? He answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Fear not, for them that are with us are more than with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. I want you to know this morning, I want God to open some of your eyes that you can begin to see what he's got prepared for you. When it looks like that you're not going to overcome and you're about to give up, when you look and say it's impossible for this to happen, I'm going to tell you this morning that nothing is impossible with the God that we serve. We're serving a God that all things are possible with Him. A God that created the heavens and the earth. A God that created and made man. Everything that we see and everything that we know of God created and made. Why should we live in doubt? Why should we live in worry? But stand up and begin to praise God. When we begin to worship Him, He said, I dwell in the praises of my people. When it looks like victory is about to overcome you in the wrong way, begin to praise God with everything in you. And look and see what will take place. He said the enemy may look like the enemy is overcoming you. But the prophet of God said, God opened his eyes that he might see. You that your eyes are closed today to see in the magnificent power of God. You may not even be a Christian and say nothing like that is possible with God. I am saying today God opened His eyes that He can see your magnificent power at work. Look to the hills. Look to the hills from which cometh help. When I begin to see and I begin to understand this this morning, that enemy wanted to take Elisha. If he knew ahead of time what they were doing behind closed doors, what made them think that they could come to him and take him away and capture him? God had already revealed what was taking place. Let them come. For greater is He that is with us. Greater is Him that is with us than them that are against us.
I believe that this year that all the battles that enemy said you're not going to succeed and you're not going to make it through it all. That you're about to find out. You're about to see the magnificent power of God. You're about to look to the hand of God and see it move. You're about to see the acts, the thing, the impossibilities with God that take place. It's sank, it's gone. There's no hope. But when the prophet of God come back and took a little stick so it took. And God honored him in that act. See, I don't care what it was made out of iron. It had to come to the top. It had to honor him. Because he was walking in the honor of God and honoring God in everything that he did. I'm not standing here preaching to you and telling you that you can't exist, you can't make it. I am telling you this morning that you have greater help with you than you've ever had in your life. That all you've got to do is get up and begin to trust God. Begin to believe it and see the miracle power, the miracle, the miracles of God begin to take place in your life. Begin to see things change. When the enemy thought they could destroy the man of God, when he thought they could destroy Israel. God began to reveal things. Oh, that was for the days of old. No. The Bible said God was the same and He's not a liar. He said, I am the same yesterday, today. That means right now and forever. I am a never changing God. I'll raise up whom I shall will. Things are going to happen. The seemingly impossible. Things are going to begin to happen in your lives. I didn't think that was ever possible. I see some things that were lost. And the devil said, you lost it, you'll never get it back. Now. Like this man I bought, he was, so, he was so dedicated to holding on to that thing that he had borrowed. That's not mine, but I borrowed that from my neighbor. And it's time no one is supposed to take it back and honor him by taking it back to him. I want to tell you something. God is fixing to bring you up out of the valley. He's fixing to bring you to a place. That you can look to the mountain and see where your help is coming from. When Moses went up to the mountain and God called him to come up on the mountain, Moses was a man of old age. And I, this is my theory of things. I don't care what anybody thinks about it. But my theory was that Moses started up the mountain. And the Bible said, and the cloud came down and covered Moses. God met him coming up the mountain but called. He knew who he was and he said, I'm going down and get him. I'm not going to make him struggle all the way up here. But me and him are going to have a talk. And I don't want him more out when he gets here. I'm going to bring him up here and we're going to sit down and talk. You've been wrestling with things in your life. You've been trying to defeat these things that you don't know how to do. And God is saying the end of it is coming. Quit focusing on the thing and focus on Him. This sounds like a random message. I see God touching the lips of a man right now. You say, God, you call me to ministry. And I don't know what to do. I've seen the hand of God touching your mouth. When you open your mouth, it's going to be like a river flowing out of you. It will never stop. You'll be so full of the Word of God and the power of God that whatever you speak to will begin to happen. The sick will get up. The dead will get up. I'm not looking to things to collapse and fall down. 
I'm looking to the author and the finisher of all things. He said, in the last days I shall what? Pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. He didn't say, I'm going to pour it out on this and this and this and this. But how did there's a move of God this year that transcends everything that we've known in our lifetime. We walk with God and we've seen God move in awesome ways. But God is speaking, how did He say it? I'm doing more than I've ever seen ever done upon this earth. I want you to know that when the Son, when Jesus came into this world, He came and died for what? He said, Behold the Lamb of God which cometh to take away what? Take away the people out of the world. He said, Behold the Lamb of God which cometh to take away the sins of the world. Richard Gray. He said, Behold, I didn't come to condemn them. I come to take away all the condemnation, all the sin in their lives and deliver them. We need to quit condemning and begin to believe them. the name of Jesus and begin to speak the word and knowing that everything that he said is going to take place. And then this that I'm talking about this morning, when I see it and understand what is going on here. And, he's, and when this servant of the man of God was this dirty, gone forth. Behold, there was a there was there was an army around that around the sea. There was an army around the sea. Everybody began to be afraid. Everybody began to be scared. You know, we're scared about the economy. We're scared about this. We're scared about that. We're scared about gun control. We're scared about this. We're scared about that. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So all we got to do is get up and begin to seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And everything that we pray about will be added unto us. I said, you know what? You can't fight sin. You can't stand there and fight with it because you become part of it. You've got to become a well of living water that will show up the living God upon this earth that will tear down the kingdoms of hell that are raising up. Here this city was compassed about with a great army. And here was a prophet of God says, God, open the man's eyes that he can look and see what is for us. He said, look out there and see what you see. He said, I see the mountains. The mountains full of horses and chariots. I want you to know there's more horses than there are against us. I'm telling you this morning, when you begin to trust God in everything, Something will turn around, I don't care what. You may have children you don't know how to deal with. It. It's going to turn around. I talked to someone the other day. I'm not mentioning names. But I see children coming home to God. God said, I'm going to make them a help means. I'm going to make them a help means. And they'll work with you. And they'll be there to stand with you. In the ministry. He said, I didn't call you for the rest of them to go in the other direction. But I called them to come with you. Brother, you know who I'm talking about. Things are going to change. Speak to the mountain. I speak to mountains this morning. That surrounded your lives that you can't seem to get anywhere. It seems like the enemy just got in camp to you that you can't even get up and move. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. I'm so sick. I'm out of money. Sometimes I'm preaching to myself on some of this stuff. 
excuse me, I got one. I don't have one enough cool here no more. But when we begin to trust God with everything. I got up this morning and I had the heaviest heart I've had in many a year because of the things God began to speak to me. And I'm going to tell you out there, no matter who you are and what you are, you're facing things in your life and sometimes everything you face it seems like it might be right, but it's not. Pray and seek God for answers before you make, make before you do things. If you're walking with God and you trust Him, so trust Him all the way. Things will happen in the ministry. I'm talking to some young ministers right now. Things will happen in the ministry and it's the enemy try to get you to the point and it will if you don't watch. That you'll give up and walk, turn and walk away. You'll lose everything that God has given you. You'll lose everything that God has laid in your hands. He said, I give it to you, now hold on to it and work with it and go with it. He said, what I give you, I'll not give to another. What is yours is yours. And this that I'm talking about this morning. And he said, if you're not, then they that are with us are more than they that are with them. Well, man, I'm, I want to pray this morning about some things before we close this service out and believe in God for you. That everything that you've been going through in your life, that everything is going to change. Look to the offer and the finish and say, Lord, I'm going to start trusting you with everything. See, it's something to stop and think that we trust God with our own lives, with our own soul. That one day we came to the altar and gave our heart to the Lord. And He delivered us. And he set us free from that. And see, the enemy is like it was in the garden. What happened in the garden? Here they walked with God and they knew no sin. But the enemy was there walking around in the garden waiting for the right time and the right season to plant a seed. And he knew he had to plant it in the weakest spot, the weakest place. So here was... When Eve was walking around without her husband, the devil began to tell her these things. See, whether she ate an apple, it was knowledge she ate of. Knowledge can be good, knowledge can be deadly. I preached a message on knowledge one time. It can be good or it can be deadly. This particular time in the garden became a deadly thing. This separated man from God. I mean, paradise, living in paradise, that the lamb and the lion lay together, nothing. Without sin, nothing, no harm came to anything. But the very instant sin came in, it destroyed everything. At first, most of all, it destroyed that relationship with the Father. They were separated then from the Father that there was no more communication. They were driven from the from the garden. From, they were driven from the presence of God. God told us, now you go do this, you do this. You've made this decision now. This, this, this is the consequences for it. Sin is a terrible thing. It will destroy you. When you're in church and you're walking with God, you got to watch. I look and, I, and I don't, I'm not criticizing. Some things I understand more than people think. I don't have a master's degree or none of that, and I'm not against it. I have a master's degree in listening to the Spirit. He said in his words that if money is the root of all evil, how does it become the root of all evil? It can't do it on its own. The love of money. 
The love of money is the root of all evil. What happens? We can come to the place that we love money so much. I want to tell you what happened to me. That's what happened when, years ago. I borrowed, borrowed a truck and I was going to go over the road and I didn't go over the road. I was going to make money and I was working. I was working $4,000 a week now. I was working. I was burning up fuel like crazy. Spending as much as, much as I was making. The more I worked, the more dollar marks, the bigger the dollar marks I'd see. Made me, want, made me run that much harder. And the more I did it, the worse I got. The worse mess I got myself into. In Charleston, West Virginia, one day God said, Son, people think, don't think God talks to a sinner. He didn't move and never get where we are. He said, Son, said you hold one more load than a dime. He wasn't going to kill me, and I know that. I know that much about the Lord. He wasn't going to kill me. I had already went from 190-some pounds to 130-some pounds. I looked like somebody that was in a My food consisted of a, of a jar of grapefruit juice and a jar of orange juice. I could see dollar marks and I couldn't stop. All I thought about was money, money, money. It became, the love of it became so much to me that it was destroying me. And you may be sitting out there listening to me. You might not like what I'm saying, but there's some out there doing the same thing I did. See, I can tell you this because I did it. I can tell you how it works. It leads you farther and farther and farther and farther away from, from where you need to be. When we stop and we think about what God is doing for our lives, if I would have stopped, God would have put me over a big company. But I did surrender myself to the Lord when I, when I, when I did stop. Things hit me in there until it got worse and worse and worse until one day I said, I've had enough. And I surrendered it all to the Lord. I surrendered my life to Him. Everything the enemy had tried meant to do, and that's what the enemy meant to do. He meant to destroy me. He meant to destroy my family. He meant to destroy every life that I was in contact with. And I believe that when I heard the voice of God, it changed. It began, it began to change in my life. I want you to know today. I pray that this will begin to be a change in your life today. That you hear. Think about things. That no matter how things look sometimes, it looks like it's the best. I'll do this and this is the best for you. It's not always true. The devil will lay traps for you. And some people don't believe in the devil. But it will, one day you'll figure it out if you don't. But he'll lay traps in you for you and it will cost you more than you want. It will destroy it and destroy your family, it will destroy your life, and people, all kinds of people around you. But when I'm talking this morning, I'm talking about you. He said, If Elisha prayed and said to the Lord, I pray to thee, open the eyes, open that this man's eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw it and said, Behold, the mountain was full of horses, chariots, and fire. Roundabout of watching. Because of the prophet of God, <laughs> the enemy was not able to destroy him. That's it. If Elijah had left, they could have destroyed him. But because that man of God walked with God in such a way that God stopped everything from happening, the enemy had not the power to destroy him. Can I tell you today, if your family is about to be destroyed, or things are about to be destroyed in your life that shouldn't be, the first thing you need to do is get your life centered on God. You may have a business out there and it's going down the drain and nothing seems to be able to stop it. Just hold up a minute. Don't give it up. But find a little knee-eye to talk to yourself somewhere. 
Some people say, well, you need to do this, do that. I just say, fine, get along with God. Begin to seek. Begin to seek God and see what He has and see what He'll do for you. He can change everything. I read a thing about a man years ago. He owned all some of the biggest nightclubs in this country. Had the top singers in this country come to his nightclubs. He became an alcoholic and his wife was a Christian. And one day she got fed up. She started praying. She went to a meeting, to a Catholic Kuhlman meeting. She, and God delivered her. And she became a great woman of God. And she began to pray and pray and pray. This man, he didn't want to give up his nightclubs. So one night he came home crying out of all. And he said, I've had enough of it. I've had enough. I will sell everything that I've got. But I'm going to serve God. I want you to pray with me today before we close the service out. I want to ask you, no matter where you are, in just the next couple of minutes, take time and invite Jesus into your life. He is your problem solver. When the enemy is trying to overcome you, he's the greatest help you'll ever find. That you can look to the mountain and you'll see that you'll see all of your help there. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Come and take up your abode with me. Lead me and guide me into all of your truth. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's simple. It doesn't have to be a great big drawback prayer. But I'd like to ask you to pray that prayer. Give us a call. To the number on the bottom of the screen. Give us a call and let us know that you heard the message. And you, you give your heart to the Lord. Jesus loves you. He loves you no matter what. And He loves you and loves you. And he just takes you in the arms of love. And believe me, you will feel His holy presence when you do it. He'll show up right when you think you want. And He'll take you in His arms and just love you and let you know He's there. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week of the Lord. What's the program to every chance you get? Praise God. Go to YouTube and pull them up if you want to watch it. Praise the Lord. And if you have a donation you'd like to help with the program, praise the Lord. We'd appreciate it from the bottom of our heart if you would help us. We're praying about a tent this year to come up into the West Virginia, Virginia, West Virginia area. Pray be with us about helping us get this, get this thing and get ready for getting things scheduled up for this summer to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Praise God. We love you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful